right, welcome to section two of chapter eight, Balancing Equations, one of my favorite chapters. Now, the first thing we've got to do is we've got to make sure that we can count atoms. So if I look at a molecule like this, this happens to be sulfuric acid, as you can see there, there's two H's, one S, and four O's. Now, we don't write the one in there. It's understood, but there is a one right there, okay? What about uh, calcium phosphate? Look at that one right there. Okay, how many calciums are in that? Okay, three is good. How many phosphorus? Two is correct. And how many oxygen? Eight is correct. Again, this subscript right there times that subscript gives you eight oxygen. Two times one gives you uh, two phosphorus. So to balance equations, all we're ever going to do is write uh, a coefficient in front of the number. And a coefficient, if I just wrote a simple equation, let's do something like this. O2 plus H2 yields water. Okay. Now to balance this, I'm going to put a coefficient there and a coefficient there. Okay. All it is is a small whole, whole number that you'll find out in front, right there. So these guys right here are the coefficients. Now when we um, when we balance equations, the only thing is we can write that number. One thing we can't do, for example, is if I needed two oxygen, I can't do something like this. I can't put a two there. Um, the reason you can is because now I just wrote the formula for hydrogen peroxide. So that's a that's a no-no. The other thing I can't do is I can't put like a two in between the formula. All right, you're not allowed to do that either. So the coefficient is the only thing that I can do when I'm balancing an equation. So again, we've got to make sure we can count. So look at this, three waters. Okay. Now if I have three waters, that means there's three water molecules there. How many hydrogen atoms? Well, if you look at three times two, that gives you six hydrogen. And what's three times, there's a one over here, we just leave it there, three. So you have three oxygen. Right? And it's super important that you remember that because as you're adding coefficients like this 4 right here, that changes how many of each atom. And when you're balancing equations, the number of atoms have to be the same on both sides. So how many uh, sodium? Well, 4 times 2 gives us 8 sodium. Pardon me. Yeah, and, and how many sulfur? 4 times 1 gives us 4 right there. And last but not least, 4 times 4 gives us 16 oxygen. Right. Hopefully that ma makes sense for you. What I want you to do right now is pause this video. Tell me how many of each element you have there. Okay, hopefully you did that. If I'm talking about nitrogen, I've got three molecules of ammonium phosphate, and there's three ammoniums in this compound, so I have a total of nine. The tough one, hydrogen. In three ammoniums, I have three times four, which is 12. But I have three of those formula units. So three times 12, 36 hydrogen. How many phosphorus? Hopefully you put uh, three. Oops. And for oxygen, hopefully you put 12. Okay. If you can do that, you're in great shape for balancing equations. So here are the rules that I have kind of developed, borrowed, got it from every source I could that seems to work on just about every equation. It's a really great starting point. Boy, the first thing I do is I look for a polyatomic ion. So if there's a polyatomic ion in an equation, I'm going to balance that first. Well, look at this thing. This is sodium per bromate plus aluminum yields aluminum per bromate plus sodium. Well, look at this. There are uh, There's bromate right there. There's three of them. So the first thing I'm going to do in this equation is I'm going to put a 3 in front of that whole molecule. Now, I can't put a parenthesis around the BRO4 and a 3. I can't do this because that changes the formula, right? You're not allowed to do that. Okay. All I can do is have three of those. All right. Um, and then another, just a, a little aside, is if you're not really sure about which ones are the polyatomic ions, often on one side you will see the parentheses there. So if the parentheses in there, that's kind of your clue. right? So that's what I like to do with step one. After I've taken care of my polyatomic ions, I look for unlike subscripts. And what I mean by that is we look at two elements on either side of the arrow, like chlorine and chlorine, and we look and see if they have unlike subscripts. Well, look at this chlorine right here. 
It's got a 2 there and a 3 there. All right. So all I do is I change the subscript uh, over. I, I take this 3 from here and I put it in front of that. And I take this 2 from here and I put it over there. Okay. And that so that gives me 3 times 2, so that's 6 chlorines. And then I get 2 times 3, which is 6 chlorines. Okay. Here's another example. Bromine, or bromide, I should say. 3 there, 2 there. Okay. i got to change it. I'm going to take this 3, put it right there. Take this 2 right here, put it over here. Okay. So what you get is... A simple little trick that allows you to, to balance the equation. And then you, you can double check and make sure that aluminum is fine. So I've got two aluminum right there, two aluminum. I've got three barium and three barium. So those are balanced also. So, tr so those little things, one and two there, those will get you through a whole bunch of this stuff. Then typically what I do is I look for, for hydrogen or oxygen. Um, but I will say this, uh, do the one that has the most last. So in, if you find a formula, and I'll show you one in a little bit, that has oxygen everywhere, save it for last. And then because single atoms are easy to balance, we balance those last. And then here's the most important thing. When you think you have it, double check. As you'll see when we practice these, you're going to be erasing, going back and forth. And you want to double check and make sure you have it. All right? So let's practice a couple. One, two. All right. Here's one up here. So now we're just going to go through the steps. Okay, um, I'm looking in this first one, and my first step is to look for polyatomic ions. Okay, there's nitrate right there. Okay, nitrate's right there. There's two of them, right? So I'm going to put a two over here. Now I have two nitrates on both sides. It's much easier to deal with a polyatomic ion than the separate elements. Okay, now I'm looking for unlike subscripts. Well. Here's chlorine with a 2. Here's silver with a 1, right? So I'm going to put a 2 right there. Okay? Now I'm looking at the other stuff. Let's see. I've got, I'm checking zinc. There's one zinc, one zinc there, one zinc there, two silver there, two silver there. We just balanced our first equation. Piece of cake. All right? Okay, so now let's do another one. In this equation right here, do we have any... Polyatomic ions? Nope. So I'm going to look for unlike subscripts. Well, let's see. Hydrogen's two there and two there, so that's not unlike. Iron's two there and one there, but it's by itself, so I'm going to save it for last. Look at oxygen. You've got three there and only one over here. So I'm going to go ahead and put a three right there. Okay. All right, so then the next thing I'm going to do... Um, Look at what I just did to my hydrogen here. Now I have now 3 times 2. I've got 6 hydrogen over here. I've got a 2 there, so I need to put a 3 right there. So there's 6 hydrogen on this side. Last but not least, I've got 2 hydrogen or two iron there. I'm going to put a 2 there. Okay. So it's done. Okay. Just double check real quick. I've got 2 iron, 2 iron, 6 hydrogen, 6 hydrogen, three oxygen, three oxygen. So there you go. Okay, now what I want you to do right now, pause this video just for a second, try this third one, see if you can get it. Okay, hopefully you did that. Let's see, do we have a polyatomic ion? Yep, we have an hydroxide right here. There's three of them. Well, here's up one hydroxide, I'm gonna put a three right there. Okay. Do I have unlike subscripts? Absolutely. There's a 3 right there, and we've got a 1 right there, so I'm going to put a 3. Okay. Let's see irons. I have one iron here, one iron here. That's good. Ooh, I've got three sodiums there and three sodiums there. This equation is balanced. Not too bad. Hopefully you've got that. Okay. Now I want you again. This one's just a hair more challenging. I want you to go ahead. Take a moment, pause the video, and try and do this next one. All right, let's see if you got this. <clears throat> First thing I'm going to do, I'm looking for unlike subscripts. Well, actually, I'm looking for polyatomics. There's none. And there's really no unlike subscripts. Zinc and sulfur are one. But here's a problem. 
I've only got one O here and two O's there. That gives me a total of three oxygen, right? Well, three oxygen is not the same as two oxygen. And um, so that's a problem. Now, hopefully you know that what any number you put right here in this box, doesn't matter what number you put in there, you can't get an odd number. And we have an odd number of oxygens on this side. We've got three over here, okay? And since we don't do halves, that's a problem. So a little trick that I like to do is I like to get rid of the odd numbers, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put a two right here. Okay, now I have a total of four oxygen. I've got two here and two here, so I can put a two right there, okay? So now my oxygens are balanced. However, when I put this two right here, I affected the zinc, right? So I'm going to put a two right there. Now I've taken care of the zinc, but look what I just did. I just affected my sulfur. So I've got to put a two over here. And again, as the chain continues, look what I just affected. I just affected my oxygen. So this is why I like to balance equations in pencil. Okay, I've got a total. Um, yeah, let me. Oops, oops, there we go. I've got a total of two oxygen plus four oxygen for a total of six oxygen. So what times two equals six? Three. There you go. Hopefully that's what you got. All right. Um, if you follow the patterns, it works really well. Okay. Follow my steps. Now the last one I want you to do is a little challenging. Okay, don't get don't get freaked out though. You can do this. Follow the steps. Okay, take a moment with the with the video. Pause it and see if you can do this one. If you can do this one, you're well on the way of, of uh, balancing equations. Most of them won't be as challenging as this one. So take a minute, do this one. All right, hopefully you did that. Let's see if you got what I got. Okay, just follow the steps. First thing I'm going to do, I'm taking care of my polyatomic ions. What I have over here, I've got three sulfates, right? I've only got one sulfate, so I'm going to put a three right there. All right, now I've got three hydroxides right here. However, on this side, I have no hydroxides. Okay, so there's no OHs on this side. So I can't mess with that polyatomic ion. There's nothing I can do there. All right. So now I'm looking for unlike subscripts. I find a couple. Aluminum, 2 and 1, right? And sodium, 1 over here, and what used to be 2 over here. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead. Let me erase this. It's kind of getting a little messy. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take care of my aluminum next. There's two aluminum there. I'm going to put a two right there. All right. Now I've got one sodium over here, one right there, and I've got what used to be two but is now six, three times two. So I'm going to put a six right over here. Now my sodiums are balanced. Okay. So I'm not going to touch oxygen. Look at oxygen. It's in every single one of these. I'm going to do all the other elements and hope that oxygen balances out. Right? But I've got six carbon, so I'm going to put a six over here. I need six carbon dioxides to have six carbons. And now I'm going to check my hydrogens. Let's see, six times one is six hydrogens there. Two times three is six there, so my hydrogens are good. So let's see if my oxygens are good. Okay? The first thing I want to do, I'm going to draw a line through my sulfate oxygens. I know they're good. I know I have 12 of each. Okay. So now, six times three... All right, gives me 18. Okay, so I have 18 O's. All right, let's go over here. 2 times 3 gives me 6 O's. Okay, plus 6 times 2 gives me 12 O's. Hey, look at that. It's balanced, okay? There you go. All right, so hopefully this worked out for you. It was uh, straightforward. The best thing to do with balancing equations is practice them, and I've got a lot of practice. You can practice on the website. Um, and if you, again, if you need any help, come see me, and I will work these out with you. Hope this worked out for you. Uh, see you next time.